Hey guys, Tim Hart here, and I want to talk to you about the best ways to invest in commercial property. So there's a few, few things that you need to decide, and, and probably the very, very first one is, are you going to go direct, or are you, go, are you going to go into more of a fund, like a managed uh, fund for a particular property? Um, two very, very different approaches. Um, if you are looking to invest in commercial property direct, um, then you're going to need to educate yourself a lot on how commercial property works, be able to do all the uh, due diligence and research uh, into that, uh, that property, um, as well as managing that property from, from start to finish. So if you're very comfortable with that uh, and, uh, and love to get in there and get started, then direct could be a way to go for you. Um, for everyone else uh, is looking at a fund where it's going to be you're pooling investors funds um, and you've got a share in usually a bigger property um, but one of the big keys is it's professionally managed so you've got a professional investor um, not just uh, acquiring and finding the right property but also managing it from start to finish because uh, any commercial property over the long term, um, you know, guaranteed something will happen. You know, something will go wrong over that time frame um, that you really want an expert in there um, that can, can fix that, that issue. Uh, there's also a lot of investors that do a bit of both. So they might buy a few commercial properties direct and put a bit of money into uh, you know, a, a pooled fund um, to get, be able to get access to those bigger properties. So once you've worked out which sort of path you want to go down, or maybe it's a combination of both, um, you can start to look at what type of property you want to look at. So really work out what's going to be your niche. So are you looking for retail, are you looking for office, are you looking for industrial, uh, metro, regional, uh, multi-tenanted, uh, longer whales, things you can add value to, or development opportunities. There's so many different um, types of commercial property and, and sort of things that you can look at. The best way to invest is to really narrow your focus and say, yep, now nah, I really want to focus on, you know, retail investing in, you know, in these suburbs or these locations, and that's what I'm going to focus on, and here's why I'm going to. So let's, let's dive into that. What does actually make a good commercial property? So there's a few um, sort of factors, and probably one of the big ones is, is that location. So what we want to look for is, are we in a location that's got lots of infrastructure spending going on. Is there a lot of money being invested into that area? Um, has it got a lot of good transport there? Um, is there multiple employers? So this is really important for if you're looking regional, regional town, um, to make sure it's not a one horse mining town or something like that, or it's just a tourism town. You know, you wanna make sure it's got multiple employers, multiple industries that are fueling that local economy, because that's gonna, that's gonna determine whether or not your commercial property does really, really well. Ultimately, what you're looking for is an area that has high population growth. So that's why we're looking for areas that have got all those things, you know, high, um, good, good employers, good infrastructure spending. You know, there's lots of stuff going on there that we know over the long term, there's going to be population growth, which means that ultimately the tenant that we have is going to survive. Um, as long as that tenant is surviving, then it means that they're paying their rent, which means you're getting paid. So. The next biggest factor to look at is is the tenant. So, is is the uh, is the tenant you know got a good track history? You know, have are they have they got you know are they ASX listed? Um, you know, uh, are they a massive company that's that you know is going to make their payments day in day out? Um, or is it maybe a little bit more of a flaky tenant? You know, that's a mum and dad or fish and chip operation that perhaps hasn't done so well. Um, or it's a dying tenant. You know, like a a, a um, a video easy or a you know video rental place that you know slowly going out of business that, that perhaps isn't going to be there for the, for the long term. The other thing you can look at as well that makes a good commercial property investment is the lease term. So you want to make sure ideally you've got a long lease term is more as ideal. So if you've got a tenant that's got a 10 year lease then you know that for the next 10 years you've got pretty secure income from that property. Compared to a property that might only have say six months left on the lease um, you've got a lot more uncertainty there. So it allows you to um, uh, look at those different risk factors and you know, buy accordingly. Another really good one that, that we look at whenever we buy a commercial property uh, into one of our funds is to make sure it's a multi-tenanted commercial property. Um, now sometimes when you're getting started you can't afford to buy you know, a multi-tenanted commercial property because they're usually a little bit more expensive. 
um, and that's where funds really come into their own. So we want to make sure that we've got you know five, ten um, tenants in a commercial property, because when we look on the other side of what's the risks of investing in commercial property, the number one risk is loss of tenant, okay, that we don't have a tenant in there making payments to us. So we want to make sure that that's absolutely critical, that we've got a great tenant that's going to be there for the long term. So in, in terms of uh, those risks, loss of tenant, the other big one is uh, market fluctuations. So it might be the rent on that property might be going up or down, you know, with market forces. So if we bought in a really, really good location, we've done our homework correctly, then we should see some rental growth in the area as it gets more and more popular. However, there is the risk that it goes the other way. Um, and all of a sudden, you know, you've got a tenant that was paying $50,000 in rent, all of a sudden the market might be down at $40,000. Now, one of the good things with commercial property uh, that, that mitigates a little bit of this risk is that you've typically got longer leases. So your average commercial lease might be five years. So if you've got a tenant that's been in there for, you know, they've been there one year into their five year lease, well then they can't change the rent until the end of the five year period. So if rents have decreased, you know, in the first couple of years, then that's fine. You're not actually going to feel the impact of that until the five year when they do the market review. Now, hopefully, you know, the, the market will actually come back at the end of those five years and it's at 50 or it's even more than 50. So you can, you know, you might be able to increase the rent. Um, but that's probably the biggest uh, two risks in terms of the tenant um, and the, the rent changing uh, when it comes to commercial property. So if you're interested in learning more about investing in commercial property trusts, uh, please subscribe to this channel uh, and also head over to activepropertygroup.com.au um, and register your interest and we can send you some more information. Uh, and as always, thanks for watching.